What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into inserting data with Eloquent. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. When you're going to insert data into the database, you got to work through a form from the views. When you're going to insert data into the database, you got to work through a form from the views. Instead of designing a complete form, I've already defined one inside the repository that I'll link in the description down below. Right inside of the resource views block folder, I've got a create.blade.php file. If we open it, copy the content, navigate back to Visual Studio Code, create a new file inside our block folder in our views called create.blade.php and paste what we just copied. At the moment, our post controller is a resource controller. So we're going to work with two methods when you want to create a new row. The first one will be the create method right here. As you can see, it's not accepting a parameter. So what we're basically going to do right here is showing a page to a user with input fields. So basically the page that we just created. What we're going to do is simply return a view to the block folder dot create page. Now, once a user lands on the create page right here, enters user data inside the input fields and finally clicks on the submit button, the store method will be called. Now the store method accepts one parameter, which is the request object. Now this request object is being pulled in right inside of the use statement at the top, right here, illuminate HTTP request. And this is the most used tool whenever you want to access user data in Laravel. What we're doing right here is simply injecting an instance of the illuminate HTTP request object. The object that we got right inside of our store method, where is it? I've lost it right here, offers access to all data that the user enters inside the form. If we navigate back to our view and let's go to our local host, all right, you'll see that we got a button right here called new article. Let's link it before we move on to the actual page. Let's navigate back, open the index.blade.php file, and right at the top right here, we have an answer. And the create page does not accept a route parameter, so we could simply call the route method and add our named route of block.create. If we save it and navigate back to Visual Studio Code, refresh it, click on new article, you'll see that we're getting a 404 and the page has not been found. And let me actually tell you why, because this is something that you might run into later on as well. If we open the web.php file inside our routes folder, you'll see that the create page has been called as the third route. Now let's actually place it to the top. So as the first route, one second, save it, navigate back. If we refresh it, you'll see that our add new post page is visible. Now right here, you'll see some basic input fields that we should be able to submit. But if we try to submit it right now, you'll see that nothing happens. This obviously happens because we haven't set the action and method inside our form tag. So if we open our create.blade.php file, right here, you'll see our action. And the action is basically the method we're going to call inside the post controller. In our case, we're currently on the create page. But once we submit a form, we got to be redirected to the store page. So what we can do is call our route method again and say, well, once we submit the form, handle it inside the block dot store method. Now the method will be post because we're going to submit data inside the database and the multi-part form data is required when you want to work with file uploads. If we save it, navigate back to Google Chrome clear our URL, click on submit, you'll see that we are getting a 419 page expired. Now this is happening because we're missing the most important part in our form, which is the cross-site request forgery protection. Laravel only accepts the read-only routes such as get, where we basically show a page to a user. All other routes, so basically what we're performing right now, which is a post method, are protected against CSRF attacks. Now, in order to make this work, we got to navigate back to our create.blade.php file, and we got to make sure that we add our CSRF, which is a token that will be generated at the start of every session. 
Now you don't want to give users the option to add stuff like JavaScript code inside input fields to hijack your website. This is what CSRF prevents. Now before we test it out, let's quickly add a DD inside our store method right here of redirect it to the store method. Then inside our create.blade.php file, we should add a CSRF token inside our form, which needs to be done right below the opening form tag. Now, in order to add a CSRF token, we simply need to add an at sign followed with CSRF. If we save it, and let's actually go back, refresh our page, inspect it, and if we open our body, let's say the div of the content right here, we have our form, let's open our form. You'll see that we have a new input field with a type hidden, so it's not visible in the front end. The name is underscore token and the value is a hashed token. This input field right here is our CSRF token. Now let's add data inside our input field. So let's say post one, post one, two minutes and just a random body. If we click on submit right now, you will see that our DD has been printed out, which means that the flow of our application works correctly. Now we're ready to do something with our input fields. Let's make sure that we double check if all input fields have the right names. This can be done by going to our post controller, removing the string that we have inside our DD, and replacing it with the request object, which is the parameter, and chain the all method to it which will basically grab all values that have been submitted inside the form. If we save it, navigate back to the browser and refresh it. Let me zoom in. You'll see that our CSRF token, so underscore token has been added, the title, the excerpt, the minutes to read and the body. We could also grab each of those values separately, which we also need to do when we want to insert data. So let's navigate back. And let's replace all with, let's say, the key that we have right here. So title. If we navigate back, refresh it, submit it again, you'll see that we only grabbed the post title. In Eloquent, there are two ways on how you could insert records inside the database. If you're familiar with object-oriented PHP, the first one should be pretty familiar to you. Let's navigate back. Let's remove our DD. First, we got to make sure that we create a new instance of our post model class by saying $post is equal to new post. Through our post object that we have right here, we could simply access all properties or easier to say columns inside our database. So we can simply say, well, object post title is equal to the request title. Let's do the same thing for all other columns. So we have the post excerpt, which has a value of the request excerpt. We have the body. So our post body is equal to the request body. We have the post image path, which we haven't submitted. And I want to set a value of temporary right here. So a simple string because the image upload is something that I want to do in the next video. Now we have the post is published, which is the Boolean. Now we've got an issue with our checkbox and let me show it to you. Let me actually DD the request all one more time. And let me add an exit, save it, navigate back, go back to our create page, click on the checkbox and keep all the other fields as they are. If we submit it, you'll see that the is published is a string called on. And this isn't a value that's supposed to be submitted to the database because in our migration, we said that our is published is a Boolean. Now we can handle this by adding a ternary operator as the value. So let's remove the DD and exit. And instead of adding the string of is published, we could say, well, get me the request is underscore published. Whenever the value is equal to on return a true, which is basically what a ternary operator does. Then we have our post minutes to read, which is equal to the request minutes to read. Now we do need to add one more thing right here before it works, because we need to tell our post object what to do. And what it needs to do is simply calling the safe method of our post, which is created behind the scenes. If we navigate back, refresh our endpoint, click on continue, 
you'll see that we have been redirected to a blank page and that's happening because we're not saying what to do once the post has been saved. We can handle this very easy by returning a redirect and where we want to be redirected to is the route method and let's say the blog.index page. If we save it, navigate back and refresh our forward slash blog endpoint, create a new article and let me zoom out. It is published, let's say post two, post two, two minutes or three, submit it. You'll see that we have been redirected to the forward slash blog endpoint. Now let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open our database client, open our Laravel app, post table, now let me go to the third page and right here, you'll see that post one and post two have been submitted. What we've done right here works fine, but in my personal opinion, this is object oriented PHP and has not so much to do with Eloquent. So let's use Eloquent for it. To do that, we need to go right below our save method and we'll delete this in a second. We need to call our post model, colon, colon, create. Now the create method accepts an array. So let's pass that in because we get to pass in a key value pair. The key will be our property name inside the post model, while the value will be the actual value from our request, which is pretty much what we're doing right above. So let's quickly fix it again. So let's say our title is equal to the request title. We have our excerpt, which is obviously the request excerpt. We have our body, which is the request body. We have the image underscore path, which we will set equal to a string of temporary. We have our is underscore published, which is actually what we're doing right here. Whoops, that's a mistake on my part. All right, and lastly, we have our minutes to read, which is equal to the request minutes to read. When using the create method like we're doing right here, you don't need to make a call to the save method at the end because that will be done within the post model itself. Be aware that whenever you want to use the create, make or update method in Eloquent, you have to approve your properties for mass assignment, which we will do in a second, but let's first remove the first method that we created, save it. Laravel, its main focus is to prevent you from hijackers by accidentally setting new values on fields you don't want to change. In order to prevent that, we got to define a new property inside our post model. So right at the top, which will be protected, dollar sign fillable, which is equal to an array. Inside our array, we simply got to pass in the columns we'd like to add for mass assignment. In our case, it will be the title, it will be the excerpt, will be the body, the image underscore path, the is underscore published, and finally the minutes to read. Now let's test it out one more time inside of the browser. Let's navigate back, create a new post. It is published. The title is post three, three, two minutes and three again, submit it. And as you could see, Post number three has been created. This was it for this video where we dived into inserting data inside the database. In the next video, we will dive into file uploads in Laravel. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.